please be seated. On the court is now back in session. And again, the chamber hand the floor to Nunji Defense to continue putting questions to the witness. So you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, before the break, uh, we were speaking about this meeting uh, during which you said um, the, the purge of law and all officials and soldiers were, was discussed. Um, Let me revisit this, this, this meeting. It was Peck Chim, you said, who uh, chaired the meeting. Do you remember uh, his exact words? Did he tell the people who attended this meeting how these plans were to be uh, evacuated, uh, if affected, how the plans were supposed to take place? did not know about the arrangement for the implementation of the plan, but uh, that plan was announced. The focus was, was on the evacuees, and they spoke about uh, the first deputy chief, uh, as I stated, in the administration, and also for the former uh, soldiers. And they had to be purged as well as uh, their cliques. But do you remember how that was to be established? How uh, was it possible to determine from the evacuees um, whether they were former law and officials or soldiers? How was the plan to be effectuated? the issue of the implementation. It means that uh, those soldiers would be detained after they reveals that they were former soldiers, for example, a major or a colonel. And even uh, some people who did not hold any rank over, not the uh, soldiers, but uh, wanting to return to Phnom Penh, claimed that they were a soldier, and as a consequence, they also were arrested. But what I don't understand, Mr. Witness, is you're saying this meeting was held before the evacuation. Uh, there was still fighting going on. Um, was there any discussion of the role of the military in relation to what should happen with these law and officials or officers? <coughs> That's what we were uh, told uh, during the meeting. And uh, the main focus uh, from what we uh, could see uh, was for the village chiefs, the commune chiefs to observe about those people, whether they were former soldiers or the former uh, uh, heads in the administration. And if that was the case, then they had to be purged. But how was it to be established that people coming within the group of evacuees were in fact officials of the law and administration or ranking officers? How was it to be effectuated in practice? Can you shed some light, please, Mr. Witness? In fact, while people were being evacuated and while they were en route and not yet arrived at the base, there was a, a, a policy that those people would be divided into various groups depending on their uh, rank. For example, if they were first or second lieutenants, then they would be put aside, and whether they were the 
chief or deputy chief in the administration, then they will be put aside, and later on they were taken away, leaving their family members behind. Uh, but Mr. Witness, you're describing a very complicated uh, logistical operation. Can you give us some details as to how this was supposed to be done? There were thousands of people coming from Phnom Penh. Um, what were the instructions given by uh, Pek Chim to implement this decision? Da Chim gave us the instructions as I stated, but let me uh, re clarify that he made uh, that announcement that his instructions were only for the uh, Takao for the Tramcourt district. People will be put in different uh, pagodas within the village and communes of the Tramcourt district. And for that reason, all the village and commune chiefs were called to attend at that meeting. That is to monitor uh, amongst those evacuees whether they were former officers or whether they were ranking soldiers. Um, I will try to simplify my questions, Mr. Witness. Let me uh, limit myself to you. Um, when you left that meeting, what was the instruction to you personally? What did you have to do? Can you remember that? Yes, I recall that after I left the meeting, I returned uh, to my place that is to work in the hospital and to look after the patients. I, I don't understand, Mr. Witness. I think you said earlier, you testified earlier that you didn't start working in uh, the hospital until uh, 1976. Uh, but at the same time, you're talking about evacuees which would be um, before 17 April 75. Are you confused maybe with the dates about the, the date about this meeting? You asked me about uh, the meeting and I already responded to that question. True, um, but I ask you what did you do when the meeting was finished and you said you went back to the hospital. However, your testimony is that you didn't start working in the hospital until 1976. This is one, one and a half year after the evacuation. And earlier you said the meeting was before the evacuation. So that would not seem to be possible. Um, so my question again, the meeting was finished. Then what did you do? I think I am not uh, confused. You asked me about the period before 1975, or rather uh, after the evacuation of the people. Let me clarify that in fact, uh, I attended a meeting or a similar meeting before the evacuation of the people and later on, after the evacuees arrived, I attended a similar meeting where they spoke about a, a similar instruction. So we did not actually know about the evacuation process as we were staying at the base. So now you're speaking about two meetings, uh, Mr. Witness. As it, as it seems, did, was, the, was the Pek Chim, the district chief, also chairing the second meeting?
Yes, he uh, presided over the two uh, meetings that I mentioned. So let me get back to the first meeting, the meeting that was held before the evacuation. The meeting was finished. That Jim had spoken. You left. What was your instruction? What, what, was it that, what, what, what were you supposed to do after the first meeting was finished? At that time, I was uh, still working in a rice field, as well as I uh, worked as a uh, mechanic, or rather just a, uh, a handyman to build houses and to build bridges along the road. Then I will uh, repeat my earlier question. Um, why, as a mechanic or somebody who worked in the rice fields, were you, were you allowed to be present at this meeting? What was your authority to talk about the purge of Lono officials uh, and officers? Why were you there? At that time, I did not hold any specific uh, position, but I received uh, some education uh, from uh, Jay Boon, and then I uh, attended uh, the, the meeting and nobody said anything. So it is your testimony that at this meeting before the evacuation, during which it was decided that many people were to be executed, you were just there. Um, without any authority. As I said, I did not have any authority. However, there were various uh, groups of people, uh, progressive men, progressive youth, uh, male youth, and progressive uh, females youth. And I was part of the progressive men, and I was allowed to, uh, to go uh, to the meeting. Um, let me move on to that second meeting. Uh, that, was a, that was the meeting that you said you were working in the hospital. Um, it's your testimony that also this meeting was chaired by Tachim. Um, do you remember what Tachim said at that second meeting? For the second meeting, he reiterated the same uh, instructions because by that time, uh, the evacuees uh, were everywhere in the villages and the communes, and he, he instructed the, the chiefs of the villages and the communes to, uh, to research on those uh, evacuees about uh, the fact that whether they were former uh, lunar ranking officers and whether they were uh, civil servants with the position in the administration starting from the first uh, deputy chief. And if that was the case, then they had to be purged. You left that meeting, that second meeting. What was the instruction to you specifically? What is it, or what was it that you had to do in the hospital? They did not uh, give me any personal instructions. The instructions were mainly for the village chiefs, the commune chiefs, and the commune militia. And as I worked at the hospital, there, were, there was no specific instruction for me. However, as I said, uh, it was the uh, commune militia, the commune chiefs, and the village chiefs who had to implement uh, that uh, policy. Um, fine, Mr. Witness. Um, 
you're saying that also during that second meeting, um, these law and officials and former officers were targeted. Um, how do you know that the people that were targeted were in fact at one point in time executed? How do you know? I knew it uh, because, as I stated earlier uh, about my other brother-in-law, on that day he he came to my house, and uh, around noon time, then they came to the house and uh, took him away. And in the case of my uncle, he was uh, taken at night, but I did not know. Uh, 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 when because I did not see it and also I had uh, another uncle who was a major was taken away and he disappeared uh, since and a, an elder uh, brother of mine real um, who was a, a warrant officer in the police force also disappeared <coughs> And these are the examples that led me to my understanding about that instruction. I understand, Mr. Witness. Are you trying to say that it was your personal experience with your uncle, your brother-in-law, that led you to the conclusion that the things that were discussed at this meeting, chaired by Tachim, uh, was also about the execution of former law and officials. Is it only your personal experience that made you give this answer? I don't understand your question. I understand, I will rephrase. Uh, you gave me some examples about your brother-in-law and about your uncle. You said that they disappeared. But my question was about a meeting chaired by uh, Tachim. Did Tachim say during the meeting uh, that law no officials and uh, officers should be executed? Tachim did not use the word uh, execution or be to be executed, but he used the word uh, purged, that we hated to, uh, to purge them. Um, let me ask you another question. Did you ever personally observe any execution of law no officials or law no officers? No. Uh, are you aware that within District 105, former law uh, officials and soldiers were re-educated uh, and not executed? President, Mr. Witness, please wait, and the International Deputy Co-Prosecutor, do you have the floor? I'll rephrase my question, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, do you know anything about re-education of former law and officials uh, and soldiers and or officers? No, I did not. Do you know what the official title was of Grang Tachan? What was it called? It was called Grang Tachan. Um, what was the official title of that place, uh, of that center? What was the official DK title? Do you know? In 
in fact, I myself was afraid of a Krantachan. Krantachan was a uh, prison to, uh, for the detention of uh, people who committed uh, wrongdoings. That is correct, uh, Mr. Witters, but my question was whether you know the official title of this place called Krantachan. What was it called in DK terms? Before uh, it it was uh, turned into a detention center, uh, that area was called Tropeng Tachan. Tropeng it means a pond. That, but however, uh, that name was used a long time ago. Uh, let me help you a little bit, Mr. Witters. Does the name Re-Education Office 105 mean something to you? get it. I did not understand about uh, the word uh, re-education. Have you ever heard the word re-education uh, during the DK regime? It is uh, my understanding that I did not hear about uh, the word uh, re-education or oprum kai prai in Khmer, unless I uh, cannot recall it. If people made uh, minor mistakes, I, I don't even know where those people were sent uh, for re-education, and I did not know whether Kramta Chan was an re-education center Um, I'm not sure if I understand, Mr. Witness. One of the nurses working in your hospital was sent to uh, Krangtachan. Uh, you saw her when you were visiting Krangtachan. Um, do you know what she was doing there? Was she a prisoner or was she maybe re-educated? I did not know, and when I saw her, uh, she was uh, cooking rice in a small uh, cooking pot. And when we were uh, requested to go and spray uh, DDT, we, that was the only thing we do. We were not allowed to speak to anyone or talk to anyone and we were also afraid of the center. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Witness, about a related, related topic. Um, in your statement to the investigators, uh, D1, sorry, uh, E319.1.21, in uh, question um, 105, uh, you were speaking about uh, prisoners that were sent to prison 204. And in uh, relation to that prison, you spoke about uh, minor and serious offenders. Can you tell us what exactly the difference was between minor offenders and serious offenders? No matter. I am not really so sure uh, about the distinction. People who were sent to prison 204, some of them uh, returned while others uh, did not, but the majority of them did not return. But when they returned, did they ever use the word re-educated? 
that after having committed this minor offense, they were in fact re-educated, or they never said such a word to you. No, they did not use the word uh, re-education. However, they used the word uh, prison. Uh, Mr. Witness, I will move to another um, topic. And that is um, the question uh, A10 in document E3 slash 5511. <clears throat> And the investigators um, ask you the following question, Mr. Witness, and I will quote that question to you and then read the answer. Um, we're speaking about uh, the same conference that we were discussing earlier. Question is, in the conference, were Vietnamese people mentioned? And then you answer, Vietnamese people were not mentioned in the conference, but later on, all Vietnamese people who lived in the village long disappeared. Um, do you remember giving this testimony to the investigators? Yes, I recall that. And did you hear this during the first meeting or did you hear this at the second meeting? Which word did I hear? I really don't get your question. President, uh, Council Kupe, uh, please refresh your question as the witness does not, doesn't uh, understand it. Um, I read a question to you about um, the disappearance of Vietnamese people who lived in the village. Do you remember that this was being discussed at the conference that you attended. After people were evacuated through my area, every meeting uh, spoke about uh, the Vietnamese and about the Kampuchi crown. And uh, also for the meetings held at the village level, the village chiefs also spoke about this issue. What was meant or what do, what do you mean with the word disappear? Don't know. They just uh, disappeared. More. As for uh, instance, for the first uh, lieutenant, that uh, their rank would be reinstated. That's what uh, they were told. But uh, they s uh, disappeared. So I did not know what happened. I apologize, Mr. Witness. Maybe my questioning was a little bit confusing. But I was speaking about the Vietnamese. Uh, the Vietnamese people who lived in the village. In your testimony, you used the word disappeared. What do you mean with the word disappear? I used the word disappeared because they were no longer lived in their houses. Uh, they all disappeared. All the members of the families, including their personal belongings, all gone. And we did not know. Nobody knew uh, where they went or what happened to them. Did you hear that they... No, let me rephrase. Was it possible that they were expelled to Vietnam? Answer. I have never heard that they were expelled, sir. They were all gone, and I never knew that uh, they were expelled. 
just to be clear, Mr. Witness, we're speaking about uh, the years 1975, 1976. Um, do you know anything about the expulsion of Vietnamese people who were living in Kampuchea to Vietnam? Can you answer? I uh, do not know about this. I do not know that uh, the Vietnamese who had lived in Cambodia were expelled uh, because I uh, was a medic in the hospital and I uh, was there working. So is it then f fair to say that you don't really know at all what the fate was of the Vietnamese people? But answer, no, I do not know. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Um, I have one or two last um, questions, uh, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, yesterday at the very beginning of your testimony, you used the, word, the words cultural revolution. Um, you explained that a little bit. Have you ever read the words cultural revolution in the revolutionary flag? Or have you ever heard these words uh, at the radio, on the radio? Yeah. Answer. The term cultural revolution I knew this term when I was young. Uh, I knew this word during the time of uh, Mao Zedong's revolution. I heard this word at that time from uh, China. I understand, Mr. Witness, but um, did you ever read these words in an official publication of the Khmer Rouge or of Democratic Kampuchea, such as the revolutionary flag? Answer, I never read it. I never saw the revolutionary flag issue. I uh, just saw the revolutionary flag uh, at this court. I at that time, I did not uh, see the revolutionary flag, but I would like to inform the court that uh, I was not a member of the parties. That is why I was not allowed to see uh, that document. Ordinary and normal people could not see or read the revolutionary flag. Did you ever hear the words cultural revolution during broadcasts of um, the radio station of Democratic Kampuchea? Answer. I never heard the broadcast of radio station. I uh, did not have uh, a radio to tune in. I only obtain a radio and have one at the recent time. Um, so when I read, I will read back your answer to a question to the investigators, uh, Mr. Witness, that is um, question uh, 200 in document E319. One, two, one. Question, did you believe in the revolution? And your answer, initially, I loved the revolution. But later on, when I heard of the cultural revolution, I stopped liking it right away. Should we now understand this answer differently, that in fact you never heard those words being uttered 
by DK or the command rule. But answer that is correct. Man. Uh, my last question, Mr. Witness, in uh, relation to this topic. Have you ever heard of the words leftist and rightist? Words that were used by um, the Khmer Rouge or DK, either in revolutionary flags or on the radio. So the words leftists and rightists. Answer. I do not know about the rightist or leftist. Let me read, um, <coughs> Mr. President, in a small excerpt from the revolutionary flag of July 1976. That is on the interface the document E3 slash 4, English ERN 0268924 and Khmer 0062918. The conference is designated that in order to build the designated party branches in the cooperatives, it is imperative to totally eradicate the leftist and rightist viewpoints. Leftist meaning not believing in the masses, underestimating the mass movement, seeing all the masses as being the enemy. Rightist, meaning just continuing to induct them carelessly, not based on the foundation of the party statutes. Does that refresh uh, your memory somehow, Mr. Witness? Answer. I do not recall this. I may forget. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Thank you, Mr. President. What? President, now I uh, give the floor to the Defense Counsel for Mr. Kirsten Pond. You may proceed. Council Kung Sam On. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Witness, Witness, I have a few questions for your clarification. In relation to your response that you came to work in a district hospital, could you tell the court when, when it was? I read uh, the statements and some articles. Uh, it said that uh, you were assigned by the district committee, but from your testimony in relation to the buy and exchange of uh, materials uh, for making medicines, I would like to know when did that happened, and when did uh, you come to work in the hospital? Could you clarify that for the court, please? But Answer. In relation to the exchange of material or buying materials, my, I was a vendor, and uh, I bought things uh, for sales uh, before 1975. So I uh, bought materials to uh, make medicines in the hospital council. My question is that did the better of uh, material or the exchange of material happen in 1975 after you were in the hospital or it, did it happen before that time? Answer. 
I became a medic in after 1975. I may confuse uh, what I was saying. My health before that time sold uh, medicines. I had a small business, so I uh, needed to buy materials to sell uh, for the sick. And uh, after I became a medic, I would go and buy uh, the material to make medicine as well. I was asked to make medicine by the district committee, and I told the district committee that I did not have money. I was uh, given some. And later on, when uh, the money was ab abolished, uh, we uh, used uh, uh, pigs or some other cattle to exchange for materials to make medicine. Question. You were the one who went to Vietnam to buy ma material. Do I understand this correctly? Or was someone else uh, who went to Vietnam to buy those materials? Answer. I did not go into Vietnamese territory. I went to Bat Dai with a, a few of my colleagues, and they were all deceased. I was told that we did not have money, so I needed to take cows uh, to go there and exchange uh, with material. For example, we could exchange uh, the string back home. Question, uh, where was Bat Dai? Answer, Bat Dai was the area near the border, border of uh, Takao and uh, Vietnam. It, it was in the south of the country. Was Bat Dai close to the border set by the council? Answer. There was a stream uh, which was used to demark the border of uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, and the place was close to that place. Question, how often did you go there? Answer, we ran out of soap and uh, medicines. I asked uh, the district committee to go there and fetch some. So how could I go there easily? At that time, it was not difficult to go there. I, Tachong was the brother of uh, Tam Mok, and he was in the district level. I told him when I needed to uh, get the pick to the border to exchange for material. And he would, uh, Ta Chong would discuss with the Vietnamese that they, the Vietnamese would come to uh, get the pick. Council, how did you, how often did you go there? Was it uh, once or twice a month? President, please wait, uh, Mr. Witness. Answer, I went there twice a year at the beginning of a dry season and another occasion at the end of uh, the dry season. Question, how much uh, medicine uh, did you get per time? Answer, I did not obtain 
many medicine. After the money was uh, abolished, uh, I at that time I uh, exchanged two cows uh, with uh, four bedus, and uh, I could get uh, kung fu and also B1. Council, thank you very much. I would like uh, to ask you for your clarification concerning your duties. In your testimony, I heard you said you were the deputy chief of the hospital, and, and on some occasion I heard you said uh, you were had were you promoted to be a head of the hospital? Answer, no. I was not promoted. I uh, was the deputy hospital until the liberation. <laughs> Council, thank you very much. In relation to the structure of uh, the hospital, you stated that uh, there were five uh, sections or state uh, departments. General department and uh, delivery department uh, medicine production department, and kitchen, and also agriculture section. There, were, there are contradictions uh, in some of the statements. Could you clarify it for the court about the five sections or department in your hospital? But Answer. Actually, there was one section in charge of the agriculture council. I want to know about the general section or department in your hospital. Were the personnel trained in general section or department? Answer. In each, each section, actually we had no professional medics, but they could handle injection or they could administer the medicine. There were female and male uh, staff. Council, thank you very much. In relation to the trainings, you state that you underwent two training, one for six months, one for another one for three months. What about other personnel in your hospital? I would like to know the personnel who were in general section. How did they get the training? Answer. Upon my return from the training, I I convened a meeting for m most of the staff in the hospital. And uh, the training would uh, be held for a group of staff, and at another occasion it would be held for uh, other staff. Question, how often did how often were the personnel there trained? 
answer. I was in the district hospital. There was uh, one training a month. And uh, in my hospital, I would hold a training once a month. But uh, when uh, there was a big event, uh, we uh, would not held the m training. Question. You mentioned that uh, you held uh, the training once a month, and did the training only happen for the staff in the hospital? Answer, yes, I held the training for my staff. Question, what about the delivery section were the staffers trained? Answer. For delivery section, I was the trainer as well because I knew how to help delivery, delivering a baby. And I also invited uh, midwives to join and address the training. I brought some experience and example in the training. For example, when the, a pregnant woman could not deliver the baby, I would seek help from midwives nearby. And uh, if uh, the pregnant woman uh, had difficulty in uh, delivering a baby because uh, the lady was uh, small and uh, we would uh, seek advice from the midwives. Council, where did you receive uh, such uh, uh, specialty where did you receive such a treatment from? Right. Answer. I knew how to help people deliver baby from my wife because my wife was a midwife. She had been a midwife for long. She was not professional. I later on I obtained uh, the training. My wife also obtained the training in delivery. Council, thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, paid attention to your testimony. You stated that you gave injection and also you gave treatment to patient before you became the deputy head of the hospital in the district. I would like to know where did you learn how to inject and treat patients? Answer. In the former system, when I was single when I was about uh, seven or 18 years old, I was studying in Phnom Penh. I stayed in a pagoda, but uh, I uh, would not sleep at the pagoda. I would go and sleep uh, in at uh, the hospital because I had a friend at living in one of the hospital. My uh, friend, uh, taught me about how to give injection and uh, there were midwives in the hospital where my friend uh, was living. So I, uh, I learned uh, from uh, my friend and also from those people. It was not professional training, but I could uh, do the treatment. Question. So how long uh, did you uh, treat people before you become uh, the medic in the, your hospital? 
answer. I uh, do not know how long I, uh, I uh, could give treatment to patients. I uh, was in this profession for about three or four years. Council. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to adjourn my line of questioning now because uh, the International Council has a request to put before the Chamber. My President, you may proceed, uh, Mr. Mr. Kope. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. We, were, uh, we would like to use this last five minutes of today's hearing uh, to request some clarification because only 20 minutes ago we were notified of a filing uh, by the prosecution uh, indicating another 226 statements uh, coming our way. Um, saying that I'm getting instantly depressed about this, but maybe I am. Is this something on top of um, the 119 statements that were coming, or we would like to know what it is about. That's why we would like to use the last five minutes, and uh, maybe the international prosecutor could answer this question. Wow. President, thank you. Mr. Kope, you have the floor now, Deputy International Co-Prosecutor. I'll be brief, um, Your Honor. Um, my understanding is that um, pursuant to the uh, uh, International Co-Investigating Judge has authorized the bulk of the uh, remaining statements uh, that were requested for disclosure uh, and that um, therefore this is, uh, as we have indicated before, there were, an, there were a significant number of statements still remaining to be disclosed. Um, I can't give you the exact numbers of how many uh, remain, uh, but it's a small, uh, small number. My understanding is they've now approved. So, um, obviously, it's a lot of statements. Uh, the good news is that they've been approved for disclosure now, rather than waiting till later stages of the case. Um, while I'm on my feet, too, I would just uh, note for the record um, that council should perhaps take a look at E3/281 pages 00168-050 and 168-073. These are uh, public statements from Noon Chea and Q Simpan praising the cultural revolution. In China. President, I would like to know how much time you will use for putting your question to this witness. Council, Mr. President, I will uh, need to use uh, much time for this witness. President, it is now convenient time for adjournment. The hearing will resume tomorrow on the 18th March 2015, starting at 9 a.m., and we will resume the hearing, the testimony of this witness, and after that, the reserve of witness. And uh, the chamber will hear the request of uh, the civil party lead co lawyer to hear. Uh, the witness D22, here the document D22 slash 2500. Thank you, Mr. Ariel Son. The hearing of your testimony does not come to an end yet. You are invited to be here to give your testimony tomorrow starting from 9 a.m. Now you may be accused to your place. Court officer, please facilitate with the vessels to send uh, Mr. Witness Ariel Son to his destination and have him returned to the, into the courtroom before 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Dutch Parry, the duty counsel for this witness. You are also invited to, be, to, partici to participate in the proceeding.
during the time this witness uh, gives the testimony of uh, t before the chamber. Perhaps it will take only uh, one whole morning in relation to his testimony to be testified. Security personnel, you are instructed to bring Kim Sampon and Nguyen Jie back to the detention facility and have them returned at 9 a.m. tomorrow. The court is now adjourned.